Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to concentrate on what's going on over the next couple of weeks as we do head further through November. Of course we are pretty close now towards meteorological winter, only four weeks away now so things are going to be cooling down inevitably and the risk of wintry weather, cold, snow, ice is coming more and more possible as we do progress through the next couple of weeks. Now, in today's video, we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, we'll look at the GM, the East and the F, and the various ensembles, as we haven't really touched upon it over the last few days. Of course, we've been concentrating on Storm Kieran, which has battered many areas over the last couple of days. So, uh, yeah, we'll be concentrating on the longer term and seeing what has changed over the last few days and what the rest of November, or at least and towards the middle of November, has in store. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitch as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you are interested in what's going on over the next couple of days, next sort of three, four, five days in detail, do check out the video we put out last night. Where we did look at that in detail, looking at all the weather warnings. Of course, we'll do another update on all of that through tomorrow, but I did want to dedicate today to having a look at the longer term. So, of course, trying to put it all in one video does get a little bit long. But if we do have a look at the latest GFS, you can see Storm Kieran clearing out into the North Sea. But this is Storm Domingus now arriving from the west. Now, it does look like it's actually impacting the UK. But if we do watch the isobars across the UK, they're really not that tight together. We are still under very low pressure. So there's going to be a lot of heavy, thundery showers around. And if you'll see in the video from yesterday, we do have a yellow warning for rain issued across southern England. Uh, but the strongest winds, the biggest main sort of storm impacts, will be further southwards through France and Spain. Of course, it was named by the Spain uh, or the Spanish Met Service. So they uh, are going to be seeing the most severe impacts. UK again, just getting away with it, even though we are actually parked under the centre of the low. If we zoom, zoom in, you can see the centre of the low is actually, once again, over southern England. And it is still pretty incredibly deep um, for uh, for this system, we're looking at, again, down towards the low 960s. Remember Storm, uh, Storm Kieran that we saw a couple of days, or over the last couple of days, got down to 952. So not quite as deep as Kieran, but nevertheless, still a pretty intense system. Luckily, we're not seeing the most severe impacts from it. It does eventually uh, fill in pretty quickly, actually. And eventually, as we head into next week, we are under quite a cold but northwesterly to westerly wind. There could be some pushes of more mild Atlantic air, but if we do watch the general overview, the air is coming out of northeast Canada and Greenland. Again, we typically call this sort of a polar maritime air mass. It's not that cold being November, but it is considerably colder than it's been over the last couple of months. Right to the extender range, though, look at that, an incredibly deep area of low pressure is starting to attempt to push in again. That could cause some issues if that does maintain its strength. One thing we do have to keep an eye on, uh, inevitably, as we're heading towards winter, is blocking patterns, because as we head towards the end of the run, definitely are signs that blocking patterns are starting to appear. It has something that has cropped up in the last week or so. I haven't concentrated on it, of course, too much. It has remained in the long term, but it's still there around that day 10 to day 15 period. Uh, and once again, it could be quite a big feature in the next few weeks and next couple of months in general of course next week we'll probably have another winter look ahead uh, and it'll be a very important update as we'll have all the various models and of course with being one month closer to winter you'd hope that the models are converging more on scenarios especially for the early part of winter so it'll be very interesting to see if they are showing some big blocking patterns as we head through the rest of november into december now, if you compare to the GM, only goes out to daytime, unfortunately, but you can see Storm Kieran clearing out into the North Sea, Storm Domingus arriving, but uh, not impacting the UK anywhere near uh, as much as it is impacting areas across uh, France and Spain. Beyond that, we do go into a westerly flow, very similar to the GFS. It's coming generally from the north to northwest, keeping us cold, but incredibly unsettled. If you look at the upper air temperatures, you can see, yeah, it's not... Arctic air, the blues, but we are below the freezing point at 850 HPA. And if you look at the temperature deviation, we are generally in the blue, so below average for the time of year, keeping us cold and, as I said, pretty unsettled. Lots of rain would be coming with this sort of scenario. But if you do, just go back to the GFS because I do want to have a look at that, uh, that rainfall. 
If you look at the accumulated precipitation, you can see still an absolute barrage of rain. So yes, it's been incredibly stormy over the past few weeks. We had Storm Kieran, Storm Babette over the past sort of three or four weeks. And we've seen incredibly uh, incredible amount of rain around that as well. And it's likely to continue through the next couple of weeks. So really some areas could be have such saturated ground that we could be seeing sort of yellow rain warnings most days as we have seen for the past week or two. Uh, this sort of uh, continuous issues with rainfall looking like it's going to continue through the next couple of weeks. If you have a look at the ECM though, we have just to finish off then. You can see, of course, Storm Kieran moving out into the North Sea, Storm Domingos arriving, but really sent most of your impacts away from the UK. Generally a northwesterly flow, very similar to the ECM though, yeah, uh, sorry, the GM. And again, very cold and unsettled. Look at day 10, another storm system moving in. Centre of this low, maybe down to 970 millimars, so still fairly deep. Gusty winds, very unsettled, never near as severe as what we've seen recently, but nevertheless cold and pretty horrible. You put on that temperature deviation and you see, yes, there is a sort of wedge of yellows there, but we are generally in the blues. That wedge of yellows is just getting wrapped up in the low pressure system. You can see that getting wrapped up in the low. Either side, though, we are generally on the cold side of the jet. And you can see all the low pressure around. Precipitation, once again, is extremely high. Again, not as high as the GFS, because the GFS goes out to 15 days. This is only 10 days. But nevertheless, lots of pinks and purples appearing, indicating rainfall amounts in places, especially for the west of 100 millimetres plus. That is one thing that could be changing, though. Yes, it's going to rain very unsettled and very rainy, but the most uh, sort of impact areas from the rainfall probably going to veer more to a west with more of this westerly influence. Of course, Storm Babette came up uh, with, with more rain for eastern areas. This uh, this next couple of weeks is looking more of a westerly or northwesterly base. Uh, and you can see that if we zoom into the United Kingdom, you can see a lot more rain for further westwards. Still loads in the east, you know, 25 to 50 millimetres, but further westwards, maybe getting up towards 100 millimetres there. Now, after you finish the video, but have a look at the latest ensembles, something we haven't looked at, in, looked at in a few days. You can see the ensembles are very much up and down as sort of a zonal sine wave, i.e. seeing warm and cold sectors appearing. But the general outlook is for average to below average temperatures. Remember, this is London, so in the southeast, of course, we're going to be furthest away from approaching lows to our west. But still, we're seeing considerable rainfall. The only positive you can say, there are some drier periods appearing, maybe Monday, Tuesday next week, and maybe towards the latter part of next week. But other than that, there's a lot of rainfall around in the longer term. It's looking really quite horrible as well. I said temperatures are only just around average in those warmer sectors. The two meter temperatures are looking pretty poor as well. Uh, we're looking generally low teens at best. Of course, the rain, the cloud, winds hold those temperatures down to maybe only 9 or 10 degrees on some days. And again, factoring the wind chill, maybe feel like mid single digits. And again, London is going to be warmer than at most other areas. So we can always take off a couple of degrees for areas further northwards. Finally, if we have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see Storm Dominguez as it moves in, it's actually going to be really deep. As I said, the uh, GFS had it down to what, 962, a couple of ensemble members down to 961, 959 here, nowhere near as deep as Storm Kieran, but still a really quite intense area of low pressure. Again, probably not getting the intention it deserves, simply because it's coming off the back of Storm Kieran, but the impacts from it are not going to be too bad. Longer term, pressure does rise, but still you can see the dips appearing where pressure will fall. So again, it is likely to remain unsettled. Now, after you finish by looking at the latest ECMWF, this latest ensemble was only just coming out. Uh, but I think we've pretty much gone to the end of the run, maybe only another day or two left to it. Peaks here, generally similar to the GFS, average to below average temperatures over the next couple of weeks with some spikes in warmth at times with warmer sectors. That's just going to fuel the rain. You can see in the longer term, there's more warmer sectors appearing, but then there's more precipitation spikes than the GFS had. So again, it's a bit of a correlated pattern. The warmer the air masses you have, the bigger the warmer sector, the most likely bigger the temperature contrast, the more intense low pressure and the more intense rainfall. So... In these sort of scenarios, especially coming in from the northwest and west, you almost want those cold rare masses. They're likely to be drier, uh, yes, a bit colder, but then have less rainfall associated with it. But generally, yeah, not looking good from the east. We have cold 
and unsettled into the longer term. And if we just finish by comparing the sea level pressure again, very similar over the next sort of five to seven days. And longer term, there is signs of pressure rising, but nothing too considerable generally. Hovering just on the lower pressure end, but nothing too deep at this stage. As the winds veering more in from the west, the, the, sort of the main lows don't look like they're going to attack us as swiftly and as efficiently as they have been doing recently, especially with Storm Kieran. But we will just have to see. Uh, the overall headline, though, is cold and unsettled it is going to continue as we do progress into November with some other tentative signs of high pressure blocking, perhaps, in the longer term. But we will have to keep a very close eye on it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed if you do want to check out uh, the short-term update, do check out the video from last night. But I'll see you again for another video soon.